Hi guys, my name is Maya and if you're new here, welcome back to my channel. This is where I talk about my journey to dental school, being a student athlete in college, as well as mental health. So I hope you enjoy the video and let's get into it. So as you can tell from the title of this video, I'm going to be talking about my stats that got me into dental school, as well as advice I'd give anybody who's considering medicine as a field after undergrad. So before I get into it, I would like to tell you guys where I decided to go to dental school as promised in my last video. So without further ado, I'm going to reveal the school I chose. You ready? You ready? Are you sure you're ready? Okay, stop betting. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. The school I chose is ECU. So basically, I chose East Carolina University um, School of Dental Medicine. Not only did I choose them, but I just felt like they chose me. Obviously. But I just feel like I am such a part of the family that they have there, and I haven't even set foot in the classroom yet so that was very important to me and I'm very excited about my decision so stay tuned for that okay so for the real reason you guys are here let's get into my stats that got me into three different dental schools and got me four interviews so as you guys know I'm a biology major um, a lot of questions that I get asked is what's your GPA my GPA is a 3.7 but as for medical school and dental school purposes, they like to look at your science GPA. And that GPA at the time I was applying was a 3.6. So in addition to that GPA, I'm also a student athlete. I think that that is super important to have on your application. So if you can pursue some type of sport in your undergraduate career, because if you do, it proves to dental schools you can already handle the rigor of doing athletics and academics so just doing academics at a higher level you'll already be used to the rigor of those courses so it'll just pre prepare you better and kind of get you like a leg up the dat scary no for real so my dat score academic average was actually below the national average at the time i was applying so if you are under average or anything in any type of area that they look for you are not counted out so don't say i'm below average i'm not getting in because as schools that prepare you to go into the medical field they're going to look at your application holistically and basically what that means is they're not just looking at your dat score they're not just looking at your gpa they're looking at your extracurriculars your shadowing hours your community service your gpa everything as a whole which i think is very very good so my dat score ended up being an 18 which is like i said below the average and my pat is the perceptual ability portion of the test which they also weigh kind of heavily i got a 20 on that part i showed up on that part but not so much on the actual um tests as for shadowing hours go i got around 150 shadowing hours they want you to have about a hundred, like I'd say that's the average, but with COVID and everything like that, I'm sure that they've, you know, given a lot of students a kind of comfort zone or sort of a leeway, which is good. My volunteer hours, I ended up getting a brown 75, which is good as well. For those, you just need to get as many as you possibly can. You don't necessarily need research to get into medical school or dental school, any type of postgraduate program, but, it is good to have on your application just to show that you're a well-rounded student. I ended up getting 20 to 25 hours of this. That's my stats that got me into dental school. Just making sure that you know that everyone, every single person's application is different. You can have my scores, you can have above my scores and not get in, you can have below my scores and get way more interviews, way more acceptances that I got. So you just have to make sure that you're looking at yourself as an individual, not comparing yourself to others. And it is easier said than done, but that's the best thing that you can do for yourself. So some advice I would give to anyone who is wanting to be in my shoes or anybody who's thinking about pursuing a field in medicine is that all of the aspects that go into your application are equally as important. This goes back to that holistic view that I was talking about. 
your extracurriculars, your essays that you're going to end up writing when you apply, your personal statement, um, shadowing hours, community service, volunteer hours, all of that stuff is going to come together so you can eventually have the best application you can have. So make sure that you're very well-rounded in every single aspect because they want a well-rounded student. They want somebody who's interacting in the community. They want somebody who's going to put in the work in the classroom. So just making sure you're not just super focused on the DAT or super focused on your you know, GPA. Making sure that you are well-rounded in all areas, as many areas as possible, because that's what's going to make you stand out from the other applicants. Start early. And what I mean by that is if you're a freshman, you need to be doing things over your winter break, such as maybe shadowing, maybe an internship, anything like that. In summers, I'm sorry, but you do not have summers off. You need to be getting your name out there. You need to be going to seminars. You need to be you know, shadowing, you need to be doing summer programs, you need to be doing things that you can eventually put on your application later on, because those things are going to really help you. And they're really going to show that, you know what, she's wanted to do this for the past three years, she's put time in, she's put effort in, this is going to make you stand out from everyone else. Another tip of advice that I would give is to find a mentor early. I ended up getting my mentor probably mid junior year, which is kind of late. Um, I kind of relied on my advisor and she's great. She's amazing. But it is good to have a mentor like somebody who's actually in dental school or in any type of postgraduate school that you're looking to apply to. So they can kind of give you the inside scoop on what to and what not to do, kind of steer you in the right direction because they've already been in your shoes. Another tip that I would give is to make sure as soon as you step foot on campus, you're keeping track of every single thing you do if you join a club you're keeping a record of this club i joined we meet this many hours a week these weeks of the year you need to be keeping track of community service hours because when you're filling out your application senior year and you're trying to get community service hours from the second month of your freshman year you're not going to remember how many hours you got you're not going to remember what you even did like you're not going to remember anything so keeping track of that as soon as possible will help your application process go so much faster you don't want to be sitting at the computer for five weeks and you're five weeks behind everyone else because you're trying to figure out what you did freshman year four years ago at this point so just making sure you're keeping track of literally everything and keeping people's contact information because once you're filling out your application they're going to ask for contact information the name of the person who was in charge the name of the club you were at um the day of the event the times you were there what you were a description of what you were doing so you can't lie so don't lie <laughs> um just make sure you keep track of any and every single part of information that you end up doing in undergrad and that will really help you last but certainly not least do not give up if this is the career path that you would like to pursue you have got to believe it in your heart that you will get there because there's going to be plenty of times where you're like oh i'm not going to get there oh i just failed this test oh like i just i can't do it but you have to be confident enough in yourself to say i can do it and i am going to do it because that's half the battle right there if every time something went wrong or I failed a test, I gave up, I certainly would not be here right now. I would not have gotten as far as I've gotten either. So just make sure you have confidence in yourself and you believe that you're truly going to get there because at the very end of the day, you're doing this for yourself. So you have to fight through any and all adversity that comes your way because there will be some. Thank you guys for tuning in to my channel. I hope you guys enjoy. Stay tuned for the next video. Hopefully it'll be next week. Love you guys so much and have a very blessed day. Bye.